doing business in Africa. You can't afford to be without Africa Investor. Now I'm going to move on to Kate Hughes, who is the CEO of the Resilient Water Accelerator um, at WaterAid, a, a good collaborator of us, um, a, very, a really serious partner that we're going to be doing a lot more with and is very committed to, to the African continent. So um, the floor is yours, Kate. Excellent. Thank you. Hi, everyone. And yeah, it's great to be here. And I'm I'm new to the Resilient Water Accelerator, but I've got a long background in kind of UK government and, and climate finance. So this conversation is incredibly interesting. And I probably won't say anything which uh, will surprise you now, because I think a lot of it's been said. But we've set up the Resilient Water Accelerator to try and get underneath the skin of the challenges that everyone's been talking about today already. That investment isn't happening at the scale or the speed or in that systemic way that's needed. It's too piecemeal. It's not sustainable. Investments happen. They're not operated. They're not maintained. Um, and actually risk creating new pressures and challenges. And so one thing that we've particularly been designing the RWA to look at is the lack of that coordinated, integrated approach within governments while they're devising water-related policies and incentives and thinking about that, that enabling environment. And our, our challenge is yeah, how can we bring those different public and private stakeholders together at the outset, so not creating something just for government and then taking it to the private sector too far down the line when it's you know it's not going to work for them. Those conversations have to happen in the round um, in order to yeah uh, get a joined up holistic um, answer. And I guess a guy one question for me as well in terms of the pathways that you describe, which I think is very useful. They slightly came across as being separate pathways and not talking to each other and i think it's those interlinkages and i know that's not what you meant but i guess it's just the point in terms of how we describe this that interplay between all of those elements is the really important thing here and absolutely we think that sort of financial innovation is going to be needed so that we can actually bring through those investment opportunities for water in a given watershed or ecosystem and that's kind of the scale that we're thinking about not individual small scale discrete projects but looking at this level. So where can we align financial products with the environment, social, MRV, getting the right data so that we can really deliver climate resilient and socially equitable water systems? And I think this is the point for me that if these investments aren't sustainable because they're not climate resilient, we're going to end up with stranded assets. We're going to just go backwards. You know, there's all the links to other things on the climate side, things like uh, you know, TCFD and actually we're disclosing the risks in the system that's being invested in and understanding about those. If we're not designing um, water services which are climate resilient, uh, then I just don't think we will get the right kind of long term investment that's needed. But you know all of the risks and the challenges to actually investing in these um, elements and into water systems as well. And how can we get again under the skin of the the right regulatory framework, the right tariffs, the right incentives and structures, uh, which will enable these to be uh, commercial investments as well. So we're really keen to look across those connections, that intersection across food, agriculture, industry, planning, energy, supply chains, nature, health in order to identify the right projects, to test them in this context, and then to test them against investor appetite. So we're gonna build up a portfolio and then map that across different kinds of financial structures, debt, equity, where's blended and concessional finance needed? And then we can triage them. Does it need more feasibility? Does it need more local or city regulation or national regulation? What else needs to happen in order for this to be investable in the real world and at scale? And our idea is that we can kind of build a feasibility facility as well, so that actually we speed up that process rather than every single time everyone doing the blank piece of paper. And we see that's where also there's a there's a real barrier to accelerating investment, getting past that stage and working out how to do it um, time and time again. So we're really keen to work with lots of people on this. So a quick little just kind of request to anyone on the call who would like to find out more. Um, as others have said, actually, you know, there's lots of initiatives. We're really keen that we join up, that we're talking to others. We'll be um, doing stakeholder consultations in Lagos 
Um, so get in touch if you're interested in that and we'll be in New York as well. So thank you. Doing business in Africa. You can't afford to be without Africa Investor.